Hello, everyone. This is Coach Clayton, and this is a women's empowerment interview episode. And today we have Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hi. And hey, and Kelly's going to discuss her journey of overcoming obstacles, both personally and professionally. Hey, Kelly, how are you doing? And I just want to welcome you. Thank you. I'm doing absolutely amazing. It's just another beautiful day to be alive. <laughs> it really is. It absolutely is. Yeah. You know, Kelly, I I made this um, women's empowerment interview episode so that it can inspire women from all around the world, you know, because there's so many things going on with, you know, pandemic. We're still dealing with that, you know, and then now we're dealing with war and all of these other things. So I just wanted to create a space where people can come to each week and just be inspired. Yeah. So welcome, Kelly. Thank you. Thank Kelly, you. tell us a little bit about yourself. I know I was very intrigued. I do want to bring up certain things, but to start out with, let's just dive in. What, what is something that you, you um, think is important for our audience to know about you? I think that everybody needs to know that um, it's okay to be a mess and a masterpiece all at the same time. Um, I love that. A mess and a masterpiece all at the same time. Yes, because as we know better, we do better. And as we do better, we help create space for others to do the same. Oh, I love it. Love it. Love it, Kelly. So let's, okay. So let's, let's dive a little deep. Because I want to, um, we always look at like a little, the obstacles and how you overcame. What, what is one of the major obstacles that you overcame in life, Kelly? Ooh, well, there <laughs> are so many. My life has been one heck of a roller coaster ride, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you my biggest obstacle. I am a recovering pastry chef and restaurant owner. Notice oh. I say recovering. Oh. <laughs> and my husband is a master chef. I was in the business for 27 years before stepping out. But let me tell you this, yeah. in those 15 years of owning my own restaurant with my husband, I had to put on a lot of hats and I wore a lot of masks, right? Yeah. So, and to be a good mom, to be a good boss, to be a good this, to be a good that, I was so overwhelmed. I was so um, overly anxious. I was stressed out. I was exhausted wow. and I didn't know how to ask for help. Because we were taught as women that mm -hmm. as long as we are caring for everyone else, we are a good something. Mm -hmm. We're a good mom if we're taking care of our kids. We're a good wife if we're doing this. We're a good friend if we're doing this. You know, we're a good employee or a good boss if we're doing this. Mm -hmm. So all of these expectations mm -hmm. that I thought that I had to live up to into yes. um, were absolutely ripping me apart from the inside mm -hmm. out. So on the outside, I had this incredible smile and everybody thought everything was great. But mm -hmm. on the inside, I was crying. I was screaming mm -hmm. for somebody to just help me. And I got to the point where I just didn't see any other way out. So mm -hmm. I decided that it was time for me to leave this earth. Oh, okay. So I, I made the conscious or unconscious decision to, um, you know, contemplate suicide and as I sat on my kitchen floor, you know, with my husband's chef knife, my daughter, who was three at the time, walked into the room and the look in her eyes when she saw me, she saw mm -hmm. me in a, in a different light. I saw my soul in her eyes and I knew right then and there, there was a bigger purpose. There was a reason that I was supposed to be here and I needed to submit. I needed to just release, let go, and allow my higher power, God, source, whatever you want to call yes. it, just put my trust in something bigger than me. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And though the medical world would call that a breakdown, I saw it as a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. It was the universe tapping me on the shoulder and saying, girl, mm -hmm. there is a different way to live and you don't have to live in the life that was created for you through conditioning and beliefs mm -hmm. and all of this other stuff. Mm -hmm. So that really was my beginning to remembering the beautiful being that I was born as mm -hmm. and to really start to shift not only my outer world, but more importantly, my inner world. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, everything shifted. I love, wow. That's a powerful, powerful story, Kelly. Thank you so much for um, sharing that. I, 
let let's there's some very important lessons in that journey, that part of your journey. Were what were some of the whispers that you were receiving before you got to that point? Um, as far as saying this isn't right, you, you're going down the wrong path because we always receive whispers before it's just yeah. like total, you know, um, whatever you want to call it. it, could be breakdown or whatever. Right, right. I think before the whisper started, yeah. I was so numb to living the life that I was, that I was unable to feel. I was unable to hear. I was unable to connect. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until my daughter, that earth angel, mm -hmm. and I fully believe in them, walked into that room mm -hmm. that that was, that was the whisper. That was the mm -hmm. calling was seeing her and seeing my soul in her eyes. So it wasn't until that moment mm -hmm. that I was unable to hear the whispers because I was so lost. Okay. I was so tired. I was so exhausted. It was okay. just a numbing. Okay. Okay. I, I understand. It can that. become robotic if, mm -hmm. if, if you understand. Like so there was just, it was survival mode. It mm -hmm. was just constant survival. I worked. 90 hours a week, seven days a week. Yeah. I was on the PTO. I was the, the den mother, the cub master. Mm -hmm. I was the basketball mom, the soccer mom, the gymnastics mom, you name it. I was on boards. I was on commissions. I had my restaurant. I had a catering business. Uh. When you say <laughs> that there was nothing, there was no time for anything but go, go, go. Yeah. I lived in such an incredible frantic energy Wow. that I was so incredibly disconnected from mm -hmm. anything other than tunnel vision of, I just need to get through. Wow, Kelly. Yeah. What are some of the, what are some of the, um, or what is, what advice would you give women who are right now, they're in that, they're go, 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 they're yeah. super mom, they're businesswoman, like in their feeling, like how you felt inside, yeah. numb. They're just going through the motions and this is their life. What would you yeah. say to them and how to balance things out? Exactly how I started. It's okay to be a mess and a masterpiece all at once. Okay. We don't need to have it all figured out. You know, mm -hmm. we have to accept help. We need to learn mm -hmm. how to ask for help. We need to learn how to create healthy boundaries for ourselves. And most importantly, we need to learn to say no without wow. shame, without guilt, without mm -hmm. judgment of ourselves or anyone else. And remember, most importantly, that again, as we know better, we do better. Yes, yes. But we have to learn to love ourselves through the dark times, through those dark nights of the soul, through our shadow sides of all mm -hmm. of those things that we don't understand about ourselves or that we look in the mirror and not necessarily like about ourselves. Mm -hmm. We need to learn to embody those and realize we're spiritual beings having a human experience. We're nice. not here to have it all figured out. And it's not about the destination. It's about learning how to stay in the present moment. Mm -hmm. And if you learn to stay in the present moment, even for a moment, yes. you're doing it right. Mm -hmm. I love so, it. Even if you have to, and this is what I tell my clients, even if you have to use your phone, we all have phones, they all have reminders, put a reminder on your phone to take the pause yes. and then follow through with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have it be a reminder, have it be an alarm, like anything else, put it in your schedule, yes. schedule the pause until it becomes natural. And when mm -hmm. we take the pause, it's as, it's as simple as closing your eyes, taking a deep breath, exhaling, placing your hands on your heart and just feel that power within, feel mm -hmm. that light, feel that spark because right there, that's the purpose. Oh, I love it. The purpose I love is to it. connect. The purpose is to love. Mm -hmm. It's not about getting the laundry done. It's not about your schedule. It's not about your job. It's not about anything else. It's mm -hmm. about love and connection to yourself and others. Oh, so, so, Learn so true. Mm-hmm. So, so true. Let's, let's look at, um, one, of one advice tip that you had and it's accepting help because for so many women, that's hard to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially when you're type A, when you're, when you're agenda driven, that's 
accepted help. What do you mean? How do I how do I do that when that's supposed to be my responsibility? Yeah. How do well, you do that? We remember, yeah, we have to remember too that they were conditioned yeah. to think this. This was something, this was a belief that was instilled in us from our ancestors. Mm -hmm. To break this cycle, we need to learn to accept ourselves for not being perfect. Yeah. Accept ourselves for not being able to get it all done. And mm -hmm. here's the thing nothing is going to happen if you don't get it done. Yes. That's what I want people to really understand. Mm -hmm. If the laundry sits for three extra days, if your kitchen is dirty and has dishes everywhere, what is the worst thing that can happen? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing can happen. The only thing that can happen is your energetic frequency is going to become damaging to yourself. Mm -hmm. because you are going to continue in that cycle of shame and guilt and judgment and self-hate and self-doubt and that rabbit hole yes. can go on forever so again when we learn to take that pause mm -hmm. is when we can start to realize what's truly important absolutely. it's all about that pause it absolutely. really is absolutely another advice um tip that you had was boundaries yeah, that's huge. I love my boundaries. <laughs> that is huge. That is huge. Yeah. How do you even start out with that when you? I mean, most people aren't even taught that. They're not taught they to say no this is what I like. Is. This is yeah. what I don't like. So how do yep, they? What is it. the first step? <laughs> yeah. So the first thing I did. This is going to sound a little crazy. Okay. Mirror work. I looked oh. in the mirror and I learned to say no. Okay. Like no and mm -hmm. feel it no mm -hmm. and start practicing it with little things and i don't mean telling your kids no mm -hmm. it's not what i mean i mean when somebody is asking you to do something without your automatic response as a woman is say oh yeah sure no problem i'll take care of that yeah mm -hmm. i got you <laughs> no you don't <laughs> what women need to do is again take that pause before answering yeah. Learn to say, you know what, I need to think about it or let me check my schedule. Yes. Again, it's all in the pause. Mm -hmm. Because if you respond right away, you're mm -hmm. reacting from emotion yes. instead of what do I need? Yeah. But if you can give yourself that pause and say, you know what, I need to get back to you. You know, mm -hmm. just let me check my schedule. You're not saying no, yeah. but it gives you that moment to really come back in and say, Am I saying yes for the right reasons? Mm -hmm. And learning to say, no, that doesn't fit in my life right now. That doesn't fit in my schedule. I really can't take anything else on mm -hmm. to stay in alignment with where I need to be for myself. I love and the that. first time you say it, yeah. it's a little, it's a little, there's some apprehension behind mm -hmm. learning it but now hoo -hoo, yeah. i have no problem saying no i say no more than i say yes because it now has to be fully in alignment mm -hmm. with who i am my beliefs my my life and yes. if it isn't no no exactly exactly i don't care who you are you could be my best friend that wants to take me out to dinner if yeah. it's past seven o'clock and i get up at 3 30 in the morning i sorry. can't do it <laughs> yeah, sorry it's take so, me to lunch take me to breakfast yeah 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 so yeah. true and for me what works best for me i can speak personally for me is to say let me think about it yeah especially if it's like a loved one a friend someone very close to me yeah i have to say let me think about it even though i know eventually it may not work i just have to be. so it's like baby steps baby steps yeah. but i like how you, you you brought that up too just to yes. say I'll think about it if, may i piggyback on that if you Absolutely. don't mind okay if you're open to to something oh, yeah. um the reason i don't say can i think about it mm -hmm. is because then they start to give you reasons why you should mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they they start to oh but this oh but th if you say, let me check my schedule, mm -hmm. there is nothing they can say mm -hmm. other than, okay, let me know. I like that. I like that. I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Because look, if somebody wants something from you, they're going to give you the X, Y, and Z of why, why it's important and why mm -hmm. you need to do this. Right. Yeah. Oh, they definitely will. 
Yeah. Oh, baked goods. Oh, but, but it's for the children. Oh, but we're raising money for this. Oh, but we're doing this. Look, the cause can be one of the dearest to your hearts, Mm -hmm. but if it doesn't fit your schedule and it's Mm -hmm. putting angst and stress and anxiety on you, Mm -hmm. then you're not in alignment with the cause at that time. Mm -hmm. You're better stepping back. Your energetic frequency is no longer offering love to whatever that is, mm-hmm. you are now offering anxiety, stress, and fear, or mm-hmm. whatever emotion, maybe even a little bit of anger. And mm-hmm. guess what you're doing? You're actually bringing that energy and adding it to what might be a beautiful cause. You don't want that. That's interesting. I like that. I like that yeah. angle. I do yeah, like that we're angle. All, we're all energetic frequencies, and people have to understand that. And uh, that's that's my expertise is energetic frequencies. And what people don't understand is yeah. when um, they're not harnessed in their own, our energetic frequencies imprint and impact every other being on the planet, whether we are conscious to it or yes. not. So if we are saying yes, even though we want to say no, our energetic frequency is actually imprinting and impacting that experience. Yes, it is. And it's no longer a healthy, good experience because mm-hmm. our energy is not in alignment with it. I don't care yeah. what it is. It could be saving a puppy, you know, but if you're not happy and you're not aligned with that charity or that work or whatever they're asking you to do, mm-hmm. you now have taken down the, the frequency of that experience because you're not in alignment with it. And people can feel that's what your frequency yeah, is, whatever you're feeling inside. It doesn't matter how pleasant you are on the outside. It's a feeling and everyone is connected to that. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And everything has a frequency, every emotion, every experience, every being, every tree, every rock, every, everything has Mm -hmm. a frequency. And we are constantly playing off of each other's frequencies. We are, we really are. Absolutely. Which is why I don't watch the news. I don't get involved in anything that's going on. You're talking about the pandemic. I'm like, what pandemic? Mm -hmm. Like I didn't experience it the way most people did. Like I worked throughout the entire thing. I never got sick. No, no one I know got sick. Like I didn't have that same experience because I live in a very different frequency. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's a lot of women that have to go out to work. (laughs) There's a lot of women that want to work from home, but of course, because they have to take care of the families that deeply affects them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But it's Mm -hmm. in our ability to harness our own energy, to experience it differently, not living in the fear of it, not living in the anger of it, not living in the, it's more about being at peace with it and saying, okay, it is what it is for today. How can I show up and still be the energy that this world needs? It's not living in the fear. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so let me give you a scenario. I love this, where this discussion is going. Let me give, okay. So there's plenty of women out there. I know that you say that you haven't experienced a pandemic, but there's plenty of women that have. Yes. And they may have children that they have to go home to. They're forced to go back to work. And yeah, you have to live on a certain frequency for yourself to say, you know, this is acceptance. This is where I'm at. But those feelings, you still have to feel what you feel. You know what I mean? So how do you move through those feelings so that you can raise your frequency? Because I don't believe in burying feelings. You know what I mean? So how do they do that? How do you, how do they deal with that? So you can do this in a very positive way. So I want to first say that the the pandemic, um, Mm -hmm. my experience in it was different. However, I had a daughter who Mm -hmm. had to stay home from school. So Mm -hmm. it affected her in a very different way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I had to hold space for her while she experienced exactly. that, okay? Mm-hmm. So when I say it didn't affect me, it didn't affect me personally in yeah. the way that it affected many. You know, mm-hmm. I still was able to work from home. I was able to do yeah. what I did. My husband was able to work. Um, but we also kept a very different attitude towards the entire thing. Instead of getting angry about things and frustrated about things, We kind of just accepted them as they were for the moment, understanding that we were going to come through this as we do every single thing in our lives. It's just another experience. But what I do say to people, because I worked with a lot of clients who were full of anxiety, full of stress, full of anger, full of Mm -hmm. all of these things. And again, it was all about that pause. It was all about acknowledging whatever feeling you were having, Mm -hmm. 
understanding the core of where that feeling was coming from, what was causing the hate? What was causing the fear? What was causing mm -hmm. the stress? Um, and most of it came down to uh, the fear of not having enough, right? Most of what I experienced with my clients was the scarcity of not having what they needed to live, especially money, right? Mm -hmm. So that became the core of a lot of people's fear was not understanding that money is merely energy. Mm -hmm. And I know this is really hard for people to understand when their entire income has been taken from them. But here's what I've learned through this entire thing and through my own life, because I went bankrupt. I lost mm -hmm. my house. I lost my car. But what I realized when I submitted to just having absolutely no control, mm -hmm. because none of us do, we only have control of how we choose to react or mm -hmm. experience the moment. What I realized after, not during, but mm -hmm. after was that I was always cared for. Mm -hmm. Somehow, mm -hmm. somehow I didn't have a penny in my bank account. I mean, nothing. Mm -hmm. And somehow I never went without Okay. ever. Mm -hmm. And I had to trust that I was being taken care of by something that I couldn't see that by something that I couldn't necessarily feel. All yes. the time. If there was a greater power. It was no longer about me. Yes. It was removing the ego of the human experience mm -hmm. and realizing I am part of something so much greater than mm -hmm. me. I had to surrender to that understanding that yes. there was something bigger than me. It yes. was always going to hold me. Oh, I love it, it Kelly. Always has, always mm -hmm. has, mm -hmm. and has held every single person I know through this experience. Because yes. Even those who didn't have income, even those that were laid off, even those that did get sick, anything, whatever it was, mm -hmm. it created unbelievable lessons yes. and unbelievable gratitude. Mm -hmm. This pandemic to me was a moment for the entire planet to pause, mm -hmm. including Mother Earth, mm -hmm. who took her first fresh, deep breaths in decades. Yeah, sure. it allowed the animal kingdom to reproduce some of them coming back from near extinction because the human footprint was no longer in sight. Yeah. yeah. So this yes. was like a planet reset. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where it came from. It doesn't, it, it, that doesn't matter. It does, yeah. whatever, yeah. like all that stuff aside, it was a planetary reset for every single one of us to consciously choose whether or not we are going to become more aware mm -hmm. to what's truly important or not. Not up to us to awaken the world. Not my job. Yeah. My job is to live in the highest frequency of myself and be the ripple effect for others to learn from. I love that. That that's that really hits me, hits deep with me because it definitely was a reset. There were definitely a lot of lessons that um we learn and are still learning. Oh. And it's important. What, what hit deep with me, what you said was that it's very important to rely on something outside of you. I don't care if you call it God, Allah, whatever you want to call it, but it's very important to have that link because with that, what I always say, I can do all things through God, which strengthens me. And you can replace that with whatever you want to say. That's, that's very important to, I think that spiritually it helped a lot of us strengthen yes. a lot of us. Kelly, I love it. I love Thank it. You. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the biggest, the biggest thing for me is people learning to find the gratitude, even yeah. in the hardest of moments. Mm -hmm. Like I found the gratitude, believe it or not, my experience when I went, when I went bankrupt, um, my daughter was, uh, severely ill and mm -hmm. ended up in the hospital when she was two. Mm -hmm. Um, and we almost lost her mm -hmm. and she was there for, I think, uh, eight days, uh, or eight nights, nine days, whatever, it's a blur. Uh, but it was just a matter of running a gazillion tests and everything else. And as a small business owner, I didn't have health insurance, okay. right? Yeah. So um, then uh, right before that, we had a fire in our restaurant that wasn't from us. It was uh, from an apartment above us 
who flicked a cigarette and went down into the floorboards and then ended up going into the roof of our restaurant, like in the oh. ceiling part. So, you know, one Sunday morning, we're extremely busy. We've got a line out the door waiting to come in. We're a really popular restaurant, by the way. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but anyway, the fire department had to use us to, to get access to the fire. Oh. So the state shut us down. The health department shut us down. We had no gas. We had no power. We, I mean, like they shut us down for over a month. But wow. here's the thing. My daughter got sick after that. And what I realized was the fire was just a blip on the screen. Mm -hmm. It like at the time I thought the fire was going to destroy me. Mm -hmm. And then my daughter got sick and I was like, wow, yeah. that's all it was, was just a fire. Like yeah. I learned gratitude in that moment. And again, here's that beautiful gift that because I live in a place of gratitude mm -hmm. and love and abundance, and I understand energetic frequencies. And even though I wasn't really conscious to it, then mm -hmm. there was still something in me that knew, right? Yeah. So when we got the bill for the hospital bill, and it was like over $30,000, I just kind of looked at my husband. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to call them. I'm going to see if we can set up some kind of payment plan. Yeah. I called the hospital the bill had been taken care of. Oh man. I right? Love Full body yes. chill. Wow. Why? Because I just understood. Mm -hmm. I just knew. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's kind of how my life has always been is just when I think it can't get any harder. And I haven't mm -hmm. felt this way in a very, very, very long time now, but mm -hmm. just when I thought life couldn't get any harder, something came in and just swooped me up like an angel's wings and just said, here's the hope you forgot. Uh, here's it. the inner strength you forgot you had. Mm -hmm. I love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, Kelly, tell us more about your earth shaman. Yes, I am an earth shaman and an animal communicator. And what's so what's so amazing about that is I'm actually a third generation, which means oh. um, my grandmother and great grandmother were both. However, I didn't grow up with uh, the connection to that side of the family. So I didn't know. Oh. So I think some of this incredible gifts that I have been um, handed down were hidden within me for so long until I had that breakthrough. And that's when those whispers started to come in that, Kelly, you're here for a much greater reason. Yet yeah. Your purpose, your soul's purpose. And when I say soul's purpose, people often get that confused between um, your job and who you are, like mm -hmm. what you do and who you are. My soul's purpose is to love and connect, yeah. to create conscious connections and to just love. That is mm -hmm. my soul's purpose. What I choose to do with it is share with others. So now um, that's what I do as an earth shaman. I help people recreate and reawaken and remember that beautiful being that they were born as okay. to help them understand that we all come from ancestral fate. We all come from our ancestors stories, right? But we were never supposed to live in those stories. We were never supposed to live in the traumas of our ancestors. We are supposed to live in the beliefs and the opportunities and the dreams of our children's children's children. Wow. wow. So I help people really come to terms with their ancestral fate, okay. you know, and what okay. might be holding them back from stepping into the destiny they want for themselves. Okay. So that's okay. one of the things, but I live by three principles. The one is as the fate of the earth goes, so goes our fate. The second being mm -hmm. the ancestral fate. We all come from it, but we all have the conscious choice mm -hmm. to step into creating a destiny of our choice. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. last is it's never about me. It's about mother earth and serving of the people. Mm -hmm. So it's all about dreaming our world into being and co-creating as one energy. And that's how I choose to live my life and how I choose to share it with others. Nice, nice. Tell me more about your, your animal communicator. How, did, how, how does that work, Kelly? <laughs> so I have always been able to communicate with animals. I thought it was like normal. So when I would like have this gift as a child, like I just thought it was normal that everybody could talk to animals. So I never even question it. I never talked about it. It was never a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think what happened is I had my first real 
uh, experience that was witnessed by another, and it was with a Siberian um, tiger at uh, the San Diego uh, San Diego uh, National uh, Animal Park, or I, I can't remember the name of it. It's not the zoo, it's the one that's across the way. So it's like the wild animal park or something. Mm -hmm. um, but I had such a deep connection with this tiger that, um, and my mother was actually witness to it, but she could actually see it. She could feel it. She could see the interaction between myself and this tiger. We literally, I could feel this tiger before I even saw it. And it, I was guided to exactly where this tiger was. Mm -hmm. And this was before like a lot of signs. I mean, you're talking, wow, I was 17 and now I'm 50. So if you want to try to do the math, I'm not a numbers <laughs> person. Um, but I was just guided. I felt her and just found my way to her. And this was before like those big security gates and everything. So I was literally like face to face with a fence, like wow. a chain link fence type of thing. And we were face to face and mm -hmm. she and I sat for 45 minutes. No one else was around, just my mother. Mm -hmm. And we sat for 45 minutes, just staring into each other's eyes mm -hmm. as she chuffed at me and put her head all over the fence. And we were so connected Mm -hmm. that I could feel and see into her soul. Wow. And it was such a beautiful experience. And my mother, I turned around after our, somebody started to come up or there was some loud people coming up and that broke the connection. Yeah. Um, and that was before I understood how to, you know, stay in alignment and balanced and whatever. But as I turned around and saw my mom, my mom was just sobbing. Wow. That's how deep she could feel. And, and as she watched this, because mm -hmm. there was no denying the connection mm -hmm. because this tiger would not leave. Wow. Yeah, it was incredible. So does it so do they communicate? Do they say things to you? Yeah, like, do, so, like do, I don't yes. know what it's called. Yeah. But do they say so, it like it's like mind reading, like back and forth, or how does it work? Yeah. So it is a full-on conversation. Like That's what I thought. depending on the animal, it's a full-on conversation. And it depends on the energetic. Um, experience I'm in. Like yesterday, I I was in a communication session with a with an older dog that was really tired and um, just didn't have a lot left to share. Was just exhausted. Okay. Um, so not only do I hear, but I also feel. Oh, so okay. I have what they call like the trifecta. So I can hear, see, smell, taste, feel. Wow. So I have all of it. Um, so if I'm working with someone and someone's loved one comes through, if mm -hmm. they wore a certain perfume, I can get the scent of whatever it might be. Um, oh. Or if there's a spice or something that they want me to, to taste as a reminder, like they made a specific spaghetti sauce or something, I'll get that taste and I'll be like, oh, well, I kind of taste this marinara type of garlicky. Yeah. And they'll be like, oh my gosh, that's my great grandmother or you know, whatever it is. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, Wait and then minute. so I, not to cut you off, I see, you I see, actually like, so you com you actually communicate with ancestral spirits. Yes, yes, mine, others, animals, oh, trees, rocks. Like yeah, I can. I have a deep connection with all beings, so I'm able to sit and and touch a tree and and know the life history of the tree type of thing. Oh. Yeah, like I can feel the energy from the tree. It, yeah, it's. That's interesting. Special. It's special. And so, so like if you see someone, like if you see me, do you see yep. anyone be, be like around me? <laughs> even though it's Zoom, do you see anyone like, around oh, me? Oh yeah, Kelly? no, I, I was with someone yesterday and even though I was reading her dog, her mom came through. And her mom was sitting on the left side of her um, and whispering, you are my sunshine to her. Oh and gosh. she she just started, she's like, my mom used to sing that to me all the time. And when yeah. my puppy or when my dog was a puppy, I used to sing that to the puppy all the time. So it's kind of like that, that wow. thing. Um, I go into uh, what I call a sacred space. Uh, so my ancestors protect me very well so that I am always... Uh, in the highest good of everything. So before I start any kind of anything, um, I one, ask permission, mm -hmm. uh, which some people don't choose to do. I ask permission of my ancestors if it's in the highest good that I share this space with someone. 
Mm -hmm. um, and if they tell me yes, then uh, that's when things start to come. Um, and if they mm -hmm. say no, then I know that it's not in alignment in the highest good of both of us. So I don't. So I don't walk around um, uh. and just see things. Um, <laughs> and the okay. reason being, I choose not to. These are those boundaries okay. that I speak of. So it has to be in my business as well, because yes. can you imagine? Um, I used to be able to walk down uh, paths and animals would just like, I'd be on a bike path and dogs would be like, and I'm like, you know what? This is not how I want to live my life. Yeah. Just to hear and see and feel and touch it. Like I just, that's overwhelming. Um, and it wasn't in alignment with me because mm -hmm. uh, I need to stay aligned and in peace and self-balance. So I had a conversation with my ancestors and, and they said, well, this is what we need to do. We need mm -hmm. to create a sacred space around this. This is not something that we just do. It's mm -hmm. something that you are and mm -hmm. we need to protect it and we need to honor it. Yeah. We need to honor these gifts um, as they are and not as like party tricks type of thing. Mm -hmm. As I will walk into places, people know my gift and they'll show me their phone and be like, can you just tell me? I say, no, I'm not in a sacred space. I like that. I like that, that you're able to separate it and have the boundaries to say, no, it has to be in a certain setting instead yeah, of absolutely. that's good. My gifts and my being a shaman mm -hmm. is sacred. Mm -hmm. This is not something that we play with. Mm -hmm. We take this very seriously as my ancestors are tearing my eyes up. We take this very seriously as we co-create as one energy this is a space we absolutely have to honor at all mm -hmm. times. Um, and we do it in the highest good of all. Again, mm -hmm. not like a, like a, you know, party trick type of thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Kelly, yeah, they how can <laughs> they know you like? <laughs> they do. They're like, Kelly, make sure you tell them this is an honor. <laughs> it is an honor. It absolutely is an honor, Kelly. How, how can people find you, Kelly, online? Uh, my website is beyond words, the letter N, wisdom.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or uh, I'm on social media. You can find me at Kelly L. McCarthy okay. um, on Facebook. I'm kl.mccarthy on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm real easy to find. I don't have any, you know, crazy handles or anything. I'm just Kelly. <laughs> Okay. But through my website is definitely the easiest. There is a contact page on there, um, you know, so that people can find all my services because mm -hmm. I do everything from uh, helping people journey to find their totem animals uh, to offering distance, you know, mm -hmm. guidance sessions, um, energy work, all of all of that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. And what is one takeaway that you want our audience to have before we sign off on this interview? Ooh, one thing, gosh, there's so many, but I always come back to remembering that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. We are here to learn, we are here to evolve, and we are here to grow. And it's never about the destination. It's never about where you think you should be or where you want to be. It's about understanding that, believe it or not, whether you understand or not, you are exactly where you are meant to be in this moment at every moment to get to the next moment, but it's learning to take the pause and be in gratitude of that moment. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you.